Welcome to Wrestle Mom's Basement Podcast. I'm Joe. Uh, this is past review for the Evolution WWE Evolution 2018 pay per view. His pleasure review since we tied again. We Pat, have a habit of doing that. Yes. Uh, Pat Young with No Mercy 2001. Yep, No Mercy 2001. October 21st, 2001. Uh, Savage Center, uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Attendance fifteen thousand six hundred and forty-seven. Uh, and thank you again to Kevin Pantoja. I think that's how you say his name for his review that I'm just gonna pull steal. some notes off of. Yeah, essentially steal. Uh, I'll give you his introduction. Uh, this is in the midst of the invasion angles. Steve Austin was running power hungry as a heel leader of the group, uh, feeding, I'm sorry, feuding with Kurt Angle. Uh, they had just met on two straight per- two, uh, two straight pay per views. So here, the incredible, the incredibly popular Rob Van Dam is thrown into the mix, making for an interesting triple threat WWF Championship match. This is the third No Mercy in history. Not counting the one in the UK in 1999. Uh, also, it's kind of amazing how how well they actually did putting RVD in the main event seed and making him feel like he actually had a decent chance when the main story was actually just between Angle and Austin, and he was added into it because he became wildly popular during the Invasion Angle. So it is interesting to see how RVD got early chances in his WWF career. He was the most popular starter of the Alliance. Yeah. Uh, and also another fun note, that uh, Click Click Boom song is actually the official pay-per-view song. Did it have that on the network? Yeah. Oh, okay. I like that song. I want to sing it now because I know all the lyrics. Click Click Boom. Click Click Boom. Is that right? Sure. That's what I mean as a theme song. Yes. Uh, our commentary team for this event is going to be Jim Ross and Paul Heyman. His last paper review. Uh, no, his second last paper review, yeah. I believe. Uh, so the first match for the WCW Tag Team Championships, it is the Hardy Boys going in as champions against the Hurricane and Lance Storm. Uh, Lita with the Hardy Boys at ringside, and Ivory and Mighty Molly in uh, Hurricane and Storms. And uh, this match was actually a very, very good opener. Uh, it was just quick paced, like you would expect from all four guys. Uh, Hurricane and uh, Storm actually worked very well together as a team. Uh, maybe just like that odd couple of fact where. Hurricane's a little bit more comedic, and uh, Lance Storm's just too stone serious that they actually work pretty well together. Uh, and also, the all four guys just were, were incredible together. They put it on great action, made for a very opening, exciting bout. Uh, the Hardys actually won with the twist with the twist of fate swan song combo. Uh, to Lance Storm and picked up the win in 17 and 7 minutes and 42 seconds. What was I really with Lance Storm? She was with him there. Uh, I give the match a B. Uh, backstage, Rob Van Dam arrives. William Regal expects him to apologize for hitting Steve Austin with a 5 star Fox Splash. On SmackDown, RVD isn't going to do that. He promises there isn't that he isn't on Vince's side, but he's on his own side. Uh, The next match, Kane versus Test, which turned out to be a surprisingly good match. Uh, They actually put in a few moments where I actually thought the match was going to be over. Uh, Like Test actually kicks out of a choke slam. and also, I think there was a spot where Test also hit a finisher. It was... Yeah, I thought he hit the pump handle slam and Kane actually kicked out. 
Uh, Tess actually does end up winning, though, with a low blow. Off of a low blow with the big boot. Uh, and it was actually surprising how I, how I thought that was match that match was going to go. It was actually way more entertaining than I expected. Uh, maybe just because I'm so used to seeing Kane nowadays where he kind of meanders on his matches. Uh, but this one, he, he was actually his quick younger self. And Tess actually put in good work this day, too. I gave the match a C. Uh, backstage, Stone Cold and Deborah have a rather funny segment before Stacy Keebler stops Matt Hardy to ask her about lingerie. He says it's good before Lita comes up and he manages to avoid an awkward moment. Uh, the, the moment he was referring to with Austin and Deborah was in fact, uh, Coach, I believe, knocked on Steve Austin's locker room. Deborah answered. And she actually goes back and forth between him and Coach. Uh, when her coach asks the question, she goes in and tells him the exact question. And you can hear both sides of it. Like, Austin actually yells his answer. <laughs> like, tell him, I'm going to go be RVD. <coughs> and, and regain my WWF World Championship. <laughs> and she goes, he says he's going to go beat RVD and retain his WWF championship. <laughs> so stuff like that is pretty humorous. Uh, we go to our next match, which was teased in the segment before, with a lingerie match between Stacy Keebler and Tori Wilson. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's the worst match on my show. But, you know, it's still Tori Wilson and Stacey Keebler in uh, lingerie, so. Uh, How I would long for the days of lingerie matches. Fun Funny enough, it does seem like they actually try to actually have a wrestling match in lingerie in parts. How I, would I, I mean, it, it's not great because it's still Tori Wilson and Stacey Keebler trying to wrestle. Uh, but, you know, you, you're willing to forgive certain mistakes with them in lingerie. Uh... Hi, Wolford. Days of lingerie matches. It it doesn't actually end. It's not actually un un entertaining. Uh, and I may have did a Freudian slip here, but I'm just noticing. Uh, Tori actually wins with a roll up in three minutes and seven seconds. And uh, my rating for it was a again a Freudian slip a D. How's that for you? Slip. You said it was your lowest match. A D? Yeah. I gave them that D? I missed today's lingerie match. I don't care what the fuck anybody says. <laughs> at least they had storylines attached to them. That's true. Well, we're, we're going to say the rule, so excuse me if I have a bad attitude. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tori didn't. Tori actually went with a pin clean. Off of her boyfriend and, and the storylines to Jerry's handspring elbow. Tori could do that? Apparently. Did she do it? Yeah. I knew she did in the match, I didn't think that was the finish. She could though. do that, well. Uh, so up next is the WWF Intercontinental Championship ladder match. Christian, who is the Intercontinental Champion, versus Edge. Uh, and this is actually the. Uh, Big blow off for their their split up. Well, they actually have still an all match after this. No, they do. A rebellion. Uh, I I always thought this was the blow off. Still cage. Uh, I'll I'll give you a little excerpt from the review. During during this feud, Christian joined the alliance, which in his personal pigeon opinion never liked. Yeah. Or I, pigeon, uh, if you prefer. I I didn't like Christian at alliance either. Yeah, it didn't really... I, that one I didn't get. Yeah. The feud could do without it. He didn't need to do that. The feud was personal enough without it. No, it's just a Christian and Nita. The fight began... Oh, all right. Well, I'll, I'll get to the match. Uh, the fight began during Christian's entrance. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, which they actually... It's, well, not actually. It shouldn't be used to that surprise. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm shocked they had it, a great ladder match. Yeah, it's a great ladder match. Uh, I am stunned. There, there's actually some pretty cool spots there, and it's not like 
the TLC spot fest, spot fest that you'd see from the two. Uh, it was actually a lot more personal and a lot more of a fight. Uh, Edge actually wins nah, UCL no one. I, I know, Edge beating Christian in one shot. Uh, Edge wins in 22 minutes and 15 seconds. Uh, he retrieves the belt after knocking Christian out with a one-man concerto on top of the ladder. Uh, yeah, this one is actually uh, a lot more vicious than we've seen a ladder match in WWE, and uh, I think it I think it called for it. Uh, I gave the match an A minus. And then your layer wrist wanted to put a blue dot on Christian's face. Yep. Just like they put a poster on over CM Punk's face. No, I only really blue dot like they used in Jordan Duty. I know. That, that was what Bruce Prichard said about him. Mm hmm. On the SummerSlam 2002 podcast, I just recently listened to. Yeah. That blue dot theory is true. And it wasn't because Christian was ugly, it was because he fought Christian under charisma. Even though he nicknamed him Captain Charisma, but we'll just. We'll just <laughs> Probably thought it was a joke. Like Dancing Lance Storm. Oh, yeah. Uh, we go to the next match. WWF Tag Team Championship. The Dudley Boys, who are the champions, versus Big Show and Tajiri. Uh, and, yeah, and yes, the, he pointed out, and thanks for reminding me, Kevin. Uh, the WWF team holds the WCW belts in the Hardy Boys. Mm-hmm. And the and the Alliance champions hold the WWF belt in the Dudley Boys. This is strange, Steve. Yeah. And I believe that's actually how they uh, merge the two belts, yeah. Uh, Smarsters. Uh, so, Dudley Boys versus Tajiri and Big Show. Uh, the match is okay. Uh, Tajiri and Big Shit didn't work nearly as well as uh, Hurricane and Lance Storm actually did. Uh, I think it was just two drastically different styles. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, it needs sometimes that those teams do still work. Uh, but this one, I just Tajiri is a lot more hard hitting, and Big Show is just a big powerhouse. Uh, I, don't, I don't think they necessarily complement each other all that well. Uh, the, the match was fine, though. Uh, but it, I guess it, it it could have been better, at least. Uh, Tajiri actually gets up to the 3D. Dudley Boys win in 9 minutes and 20 seconds. I uh, gave the match a C-. minus. Uh, up next... We get uh, Booker T versus The Undertaker. This is Biker Taker. It's in that period. Uh, I'm really surprised it's also just Ghost King Tess. Yeah. From what you were telling me this morning. Uh, yeah, it was. You didn't tell me how good King Tess was, but you said you didn't grade this one good. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well I'm not see, as. Then I seen your grade for King Tess. So I'm assuming it wasn't as good as that. Yeah. The way you described it. Uh, yeah, it wasn't as good. It, it took a while to get going and never actually got anywhere. Uh, it's Undertaker, I think. That and Booker T probably at this point in the Alliance's career, well, someone in the Alliance besides Austin needed a win. Right, yeah. Uh, so it probably isn't the best idea to have Booker T lose. Uh, it is. It isn't. It is an even back and forth fight. A lot more than what DDP and Taker was. Uh, but still, it was sort of. It took a while to get going and actually never reached anywhere to get going. Hey, Tessa and Dolly's got the win. And also, this was kind of like also in the same point where Taker didn't necessarily care about in ring quality. Yeah, I until he cut the. Until he cut his hair. Yeah. With the biker. Where he became big evil. I don't remember him having great matches in between yeah. 2000 and 2001. Mine's uh, with Triple... Mine's with, uh... Triple H at WrestleMania 17. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, at the point where Triple H could... Just carry anybody. Yeah. Like he tried to do at, uh... Super Showdown. Super Showdown. Yeah. Uh, I ended giving the match a D. Uh... 
But that's legit the only great match I can think of in between. Uh, Taker won for the last ride in 13 minutes and 12 seconds. That's legit the only great match I can think of from him. Between 2000 and 2001. Yeah. It wasn't until uh, WrestleMania 18, I, I want to say. With Ric Flair, who went on a roll. Yeah. Uh, WCW Championship, The Rock, who is the WCW Champion, versus Chris Jericho. Uh, and to me, I thought this was the match of the night. Uh, Jericho and Rock had very good chemistry together. Uh, in promos and matches, pretty much you put them on screen together, they were pretty much just going to knock whatever they had out of the park. Uh, especially at this point where Rock was in his prime in ring shape. Uh, I also told a pretty good story too as well uh, like Jericho you you could see Jericho getting a lot more desperate as the match went on too uh, like he's slowly turning heel uh, it actually ends when just see if I'm missing anything on the finish uh, Stephanie McMahon runs in of course the McMahon running, uh, but she slides a chair in, starts to just distract the ref. Uh, she at it's to explain that she actually hates both and doesn't really care who wins. Uh, she just wants the of them to lose, I guess. Uh, or no, she act, she's actually in the center of the rock. Rock doesn't care and actually hits her with a rock bottom anyway. Uh, well, the official looks Stephanie out of the ring. Uh, Jericho nail, nails the breakdown. Essentially, it's the stroke Jericho was using at the time. Uh, Jeff Jarrett's stroke, which is a uh, uh, Russian oh, leg sweep. Yeah, we're Russian. Yeah. Uh, the skull crossing finale, if you will. Uh, and, and Rock's face lands on the chair. Uh, Jericho wins his first world championship and ironically being the WCW championship in 23 minutes and 43 seconds. Uh, again, the best match on, on the show. Uh, and I just like how the story evolved through the, throughout the match. I uh, gave the match an A. Uh, so, main event time. We get to uh, the WWF championship match. Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Kurt Angle versus Rob Van Dam. Uh, and I, th and I think he's off there, because I, I thought Kurt Angle was the champion. Wasn't he? Yeah, he won uh, at Unforgiveness. Yeah, he was the champion, but he has Stone Cold listed as a, whatever. Uh, WWE, uh, Kurt Angle was the champion versus Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Rob Van Dam. Uh, the three actually worked pretty well together. Uh, of course we had the uh, obligatory at this time McMahon run-in. Uh, Austin was the champ. Oh, Austin was the champ. Yeah. Oh. Okay, my bad. I, look I, I apparently just went down on my mind and thought Kurt Angle was the champion the whole time. No, I'm going to look up though, what you could say when Angle lost the belt. Yeah. Because he won all for giving one, which is our next pay-per-view. Yes. For the weekly, yeah. We're actually doing the prequel thing. Uh, yes. But yeah, I thought all three guys worked very well together and put on a very solid main event match. Uh, all three guys got in very good spots uh, and made for an exciting triple threat. Uh, of course, the man, McMahon's ran in. Uh, Vince was actually out there the whole time trying to help Kurt regain the WWF title for Team WWF. Uh, however, Shane starts to interfere and Vince and Shane literally... Vince tackles Shane over the announce table and they start brawling. Uh, however, uh, it was also when Kurt Angle was on the outside and RVD was knocked down the middle ring. Austin picks him up and hits him with a stunner to retain the WWF championship. Uh, again, a very solid main event. Uh, very exciting. Uh, Kind of left you guessing who could, if RVD could possibly win, or if Angle could take it back, or uh, even if Austin could retain. Uh, I gave it a B plus. Real quick, uh, he only held it for three weeks. Oh, I he thought also on October eighth, two thousand one edition of Roll. Oh, I thought he, I thought he had it to the next month. 
even on this paper if you want watching it, apparently. Uh, overall, it's a very, very good show. Uh, literally, I don't... Like, if you have about three hours to kill, uh, is, this would be a fine show to do it with. Uh, very, very good show. Uh, very solid main event. Uh, two excellent matches in, in the Intercontinental Title Ladder match and uh, the WCW Championship match with Jericho and Rock. Uh, overall, I gave it a B plus. Uh, and next Monday, I have my Star Series 2008 punch review for WWE Crown Jewel 2018. And uh, I'll next to Gary Q&A. So, see you then. See you then.